So the film's roughly about uh, gaming taken to the next level, where people are actually in the games uh, being controlled by others. Um, what drew me to the movie wasn't so much, I think, the idea of it, as much as Neville Dean and Taylor saying, hey Milo, this is what you're doing, and this is what you're playing. You're gonna play Rick Rape. Wait, I'm sorry, I don't think I heard you. Rick Rape? Okay. Um, kind of a departure from a little more of the wholesome stuff that I'd played in the past. But I read the script and I didn't understand it, but I, th I thought this is cool and I have a pretty big trust with Mark and Brian having worked with them a little bit. And I just went in and, and just goofed off and tried to um, be honest to the kid's name, Rick Rape, and make him disturbing and fun at the same time. Because he's a guy who's not quite in control of himself. And he's an odd combination of a black widow and a bumblebee in human form, being controlled by somebody else with silver teeth. So it's a little, it's a little weird. It's, it's strange when you have to rehearse things and then you actually have to um, play a disturbed character because you're walking up to someone like Amber Valletta and, and with Mark and Brian there and saying, um, I, I think maybe Rick Rape might fondle Amber's breast while humping her leg as the elevator doors are opening. Does that sound right to anybody else? And then everybody goes, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, let's do it. And hey, let's do another version where you're slapping her ass or you're doing this. And it's just, I, my mom raised me a little differently. So I think it's odd broaching those kind of disturbed thoughts in your mind, but they totally work for the character and you're seeing it on screen and, and you're performing it. And it's just, it's, it's funny and it's laughable and it's f disgusting. And Mark and Brian, they're on set, they're behind the camera. They're actually really the guys that are making the movie, they're not just giving a little direction and passing it off to somebody else, like a crew. So they're constantly on, you have to keep up with them. Um, they're just high energy guys and, and everybody involved. Uh, my, my bit was only with Jerry and Amber, but seeing the pictures and, and seeing the footage from what they'd shot previous, it was just, it looked like such a great time and everybody was enjoying themselves and working hard and it was, it was a lot of fun to be a part of. I, th I think I could get wrapped up in games like anybody else, but I try not to, but I, I've definitely played a couple recent ones. Um, Fallout 3 and Fracture and Fallout 3 and Fracture. And um, I don't know, I, I, tr I try not to get too wrapped up in it because I know I'll just spend a week <laughs> not sleeping, not showering, not leaving my house, just I need to beat this level. I think it's a little terrifying that we could actually go in that direction, uh, that we could go into that uh, all involved, all voyeur, all human experience as opposed to living out um, you know, um, ideas of, of being in a war and killing people, but it's just a computer graphic, it's, it's, a, it's a game program. So it's, it's definitely a frightening idea of where the world could go with technology and whatnot, but it's also, technology is gonna, gonna go in that direction, and at some point we'll probably all have implants in our head and answer our phone like, hello, yeah, hi, no, I'm in an interview, yeah, I gotta go, okay, I'll, I'll, okay, here's the document, okay, yeah, bye. You know, it's like, it's scary, it's scary, and it's like, you, we have to know, I think, as human beings, like, well, where do we cut off? Where do we actually stick to just being human and not worry about evolving the technology and having that take over um, from our human instinct and human relation and things like that. Because like, it, it, on a base, fundamental human level, things are so much cooler when you can look someone in the eye and talk to them, when you can shake their hand, when you, know, you can kiss a woman or a woman kiss a man. It's like just the human interaction, conversation, everything about it is so much cooler than technology. Nev, he's always on those rollerblades and he's worked with Oakley and Red to build rigs that will help him be a better filmmaker while rolling at 60 miles an hour or holding onto a motorcycle. Um, I mean, those guys, they, they, they truly do did help build and develop those cameras with the company, and it's such a beautiful image. I mean, it, it got me to where I was thinking, well, my next directing gig, I'm gonna shoot on red, and I did. And after I saw what they did with the red cam, I went and did two projects of my own on a red cam. So it's cool to see that technology and see them apply it with their kind of fast-paced filmmaking.